The Christ Spirit only united with the three bodies gradually in a process that took three years. Initially the connection was a loose one. The three bodies were only truly filled with the Christ Spirit at a time when death was not far off. Compared to all the pain and suffering Jesus of Nazareth experienced in his three stages of development, the suffering that Christ went through now was infinitely greater. Over a period of three years, the Christ Spirit slowly found a way of entering into the three human bodies. It was continual pain, but pain that was transformed into love and love and love. If we investigate the way Christ Jesus lived among his close followers during the three years, we find it was different from year to year. In the first year, the Christ was only loosely connected with the body of Jesus of Nazareth. At any moment the physical body might be in one place and the Christ spirit would be somewhere else. When the other Gospels speak of the Lord appearing to the disciples in some place or other, the physical body would be somewhere else and the Christ spirit would move around the country. That was at the beginning. As time went on, the Christ spirit united more and more closely with the body of Jesus of Nazareth. Thus it would happen later on that when the Christ was among his closest disciples, these would be so strongly connected with him in heart and mind that he was not separate from them, as it were. The more he entered into his body, the more did he come to live in the inmost being of his disciples. Going about in their midst, he would speak now through one of them and now through another, for he had become so much part of them that it would not always be Jesus Christ who uttered the words, but sometimes one of the disciples. The Christ would speak through one of the disciples. He entered so powerfully into the inner life of the disciples that the face of the disciple through whom the Christ was speaking would change. Outsiders would then feel that it was the Master who spoke. The other individual who was in fact the Christ would be reduced to nothingness, looking quite ordinary. Thus he would speak now through one, now through another, as they went about the country. This was the secret of his influence during the latter part of the three years. As Christ went about with his disciples in this way, he became increasingly more dangerous in the eyes of his enemies who would say, How can we lay hands on him? We can't arrest the whole company. If we take the one who is speaking, we shall never know if he is the one or not. If we take the wrong one, the one we want will escape. They never knew if the one they saw before them was the man they wanted. That was their great anxiety. They knew that different individuals would speak at different times and the wanted man could not be identified because he would look as ordinary as one of the others. There was something very special about this company and because of this it was necessary to have a betrayal. The matter was not as it is usually represented. What is it supposed to mean that Judas was to kiss the one who was wanted? The way the story is normally told it should not have been difficult to get hold of Jesus of Nazareth. The kiss would be meaningless. Unless the situation was such that someone who was in a position to know had to show those who did not know which was the right man. I have indicated the reason why the enemy did not know which was the right man. The Christ Spirit only united completely with the bodies of Jesus of Nazareth when great suffering had to be faced and the mystery of Golgotha was beginning. What happened then is most beautifully described in the other Gospels. One of the facts emerging when the seer's eye e -Y -E, is directed to these events in the Akashic record is that at the time when the Christ hung on the cross a darkness fell on the earth in the region around Golgotha that was like an eclipse of the sun. I am unable to say if it was a solar eclipse or darkness caused by mighty cloud formations, but darkness of the kind normally observed during a solar eclipse happened around the mystery of Golgotha. Seen with a seer's eye, life on earth during an eclipse is very different from the usual. In plants, the connection between the ether body and the physical body is completely different. 
and in animals astral body and ether body look very different when the earth is darkened in this way. It is different from what happens during the absence of the sun at night. Nor was it the way it would be when the sky is covered with clouds in the ordinary way. It was a particularly dense darkness. As I said, I do not know if this was an actual solar eclipse, but one sees something rather like an eclipse. While this change happened on earth, also in the physical sense, the Christ Spirit entered into the living earth aura. Through the death of Christ Jesus, the earth received the Christ impulse. The greatest event that ever happened on earth can only be described in such simple halting words. Human words simply are not enough to convey these things adequately. When the body of Jesus was taken from the cross and laid in a tomb, another natural event occurred, rather like something entering into the moral life of a person. The seer's eye can observe a whirlwind arising and a fissure opening in the ground. This received the body of Jesus, and the burial cloths were whirled away from the corpse. It is deeply moving to see the cloths arranged exactly as described in the Gospel of John. Those two events, the darkening of the earth and the earthquake, accompanied by a tremendous whirlwind, show that natural events occurred at the same time as the spiritual events at that time in earth evolution.